I watched five Yama Daryosuke dramas. It may seem excessive, but yes, a total of five. I blame this on Osamani Sasagu Kusuriyubi, which served as the catalyst for everything. It reignited my interest in using Twitter again, inspired me to delve back into video editing and GIFs, even motivated me to currently learn Nihongo, and lastly, the birth of this YouTube channel. It's funny how life works, because if we go back to the year 2007, when I was a very dedicated fangirl of the idol group Arashi, it was that year when Heisei Jump made their debut, and it was Nakajima Yuto that stood out to me. And may I just say, I'm hoping for a Yuto Yuko reunion in any shape or form. <coughs> we all deserve one. So, I never really took notice of Yamada Ryosuke. He never really got my eye back then. Initially, I perceived him as somewhat childlike and so not my type. But as they say, times change and so did my perspective. I fear that this could mean I'll be rambling all over the place, given my fangirl tendencies. But rest assured, I'll strive to keep everything brief and somewhat balanced. Kainan na bell, we follow Takada Yu, who has always lived in the shadow of his high-achieving older brother, Yuichi. Their father has always been in favor towards his older brother. Leaving you neglected and yearning for his father's love and recognition. And as fate would have it, you also find himself developing romantic feelings for a co-worker. However, irony strikes when he discovers that she is actually dating, as you would have guessed it, his older brother Yuichi. From the complex family dynamics, intertwined romance, and themes of retribution, Cain and Abel offer a relatively tame yet engaging entry point to the somewhat soapy side of Japanese dramas. One aspect I appreciated was the flawed nature of the characters, which resulted in dramatic chaos unfolding in each episode. It's also not hard to root for you as a character, as he works hard to prove to himself and succeed independently, despite the help his brother or his family name has given him. His determination and desire to find his place in both the family and their company led to moments of madness in the latter part of the series. Though the one thing I wish to improve on was the treatment of the female characters in this drama. They lack meaningful development, often existing merely as plot devices or objects to be obtained. Like as much as I want to root for Hikari's one-sided love crush on you, we just see her mope and look from afar without much else. While the series had its moments of intensity, I yearned for something more I could care for. In Momikesh de Fuyu, we delve into the lives of the affluent Kitazawa family. Mr. Kitazawa has three children. The eldest, Hirofumi, is a skilled heart surgeon, while Chiaki, the second child, has achieved success as a lawyer. Our primary focus, however, lies on Shusaku, the youngest and the weakling. He works as an elite police officer. One dramatic rainy night, Mr. Kitazawa went home and unveiled a crisis. Leading to a slew of questionable actions from the two older siblings that caused Shusaku a bit of a culture shock. He finds himself at odds with his unwavering love for his family and the ethical dilemmas he faces in life and in his line of work. The one drama I initially thought of as skippable turned out to be an absolute delight. It felt more like a comedy anime brought to life, fully embracing its outrageousness and using it to its advantage. The chemistry among the cast was superb and their interactions added depth to the challenges they faced. 
each problem the Kitazawa household encountered provided more punch and meaning to their dynamic as a unit. Making the story even more engaging. Overall, I recommend this drama for its comedic brilliance and engaging cast dynamics. Though it is still a matter of taste, as it gets a little too out of bounds as we progress. For me, it's a show that will keep you entertained and laughing throughout. In Kiwadoi Futari K2, Yuichi embarks on his first day at work. Shh. However, his excitement turns to surprise when he discovers that his assigned partner Kenji is nowhere to be found. This starts Ryuichi and Kenji's quest to solve brutal crimes in Ikebukuro, united by a secret they both share. This drama truly packs a punch, delivering an engaging, captivating, yet rowdy story within six episodes. It seamlessly blends elements of mystery, the beauty of found family, and an abundance of playful banter. At the heart of the show lies the dynamic between Yamada and Kei, whose chemistry and rapport hold everything together. Their interactions create a delightful balance of humor and tension making it a joy to watch their journey unfold. However, I was hoping for more screen time from Hajime. Hajime! In Ore no Kawaii wa Mosugu Shohikigen, we meet Maruya Kosuke, a 29-year-old employee working in the sales department of a beer company. Blessed with good looks, he has always been popular. Life has been seemingly effortless for him until he is confronted with a rude awakening. That his cuteness has an expiration date. This became a turning point for Kosuke as he navigates the challenges of adulthood, grappling with the newfound awareness that his looks alone may not guarantee success or happiness. Among the five dramas, this particular one initially made me hesitant. But to my surprise, it ended up becoming my absolute favorite. Despite incorporating a subtle fantasy element, everything within the story felt remarkably natural. The character development, most especially with Kosuke, unfolded seamlessly. And the romance portrayed between him and Izumi felt incredibly genuine. It never veered into cringe-worthy territory. It presented the most organic and authentic portrayal of a developing office romance. Plus, if I may, the fact that we get to hear of Yamada Ryosuke's captivating boyfriend voice is a surefire way to send everyone to the Delulu zone. Izumi-chan. Yes. <laughs> Ore no Kawaii wa Mosugu Shohikigen became my go-to drama for comfort, a world I eagerly wanted to spend more time in. I just simply loved it. Kawaii <laughs> katta <laughs> Shin Ai Naru Bokue Satsuo Komete is adapted from the manga series of the same name. Our story revolves around Eiji, a young man burdened with a dark and haunting secret that he is the son of a notorious serial killer, LL. Haunted by his father's sinister legacy, Eiji tried to live his life as normal as he possibly could. One day, he noticed memory blackouts with very questionable and bloody items in his apartment. As mysterious events unfold and new murders emerge, this leads A.G. to a starting revelation. He's sharing his life with an alter ego, another personality within him. I must admit that I felt uncomfortable the way the drama utilized split personality as a plot device. Nani-san! <laughs> Oh, 
あなた誰 Additionally, the somewhat inconsistent tone throughout the drama made it challenging to fully immerse myself. Despite the abundance of potentially good twists and turns, though AG as a character broke my heart, he was constantly used, manipulated, and burdened with other people's agendas. His vulnerability and desperate need for warmth and understanding intensified his devastation of himself as a character. This drama had all the makings of a gripping story, and I was eager for it to captivate me. However, the continuous unveiling of twist led to a muddled and confusing narrative, making it hard to fully care. I might have missed out on a lot, but I am grateful that I can now enjoy them when I truly need them. Now, let's dive into the rankings and have some fun. I'll include Osama ni Sasago Kusuriyubi for more options. Please also remember that these rankings only entirely reflect my personal taste. So, since Yamada Yosuke has portrayed a wide array of captivating characters in various dramas, each with their unique styles and personalities, and given that hair is such a huge factor for me from face framing hairstyles to clean and proper looks and everything in between of course we'll have to do this ranking for Kain and Abel well this drama was a whole journey not only with Yu's character development but like also his hair it also went through the stages of change and I find that really interesting I like his jet black hair more it was also a treat for me that he styled his hair up during the wedding at the end so that was nice for Osama this is the Yamada Ryosuke hair that basically started it all for me considering that the manga character of Togo has like the similar very stiff kind of hair we couldn't really do anything about it for the killer inside me the conflicted tone of the drama is basically mirrored with Eiji's hair, representing both the soft side, which is the nice Eiji, and then the com- conflicted side, which is the real Eiji. I think that's interesting that it adds a layer to his character, so that's nice. Then we have here the K2 hair, which is Ryuichi's hair. It's relatively normal. You get to see his forehead, which is good, but I was hoping that it would look the same as in Momikeshite for you. For Ore no Kawaii, well, in this drama, it's Yamada Ryosuke's softest look that shines true, perfectly suiting the title of Kawaii, which is cute. He just makes you feel at ease, almost to the point that he resembles a teddy bear for some reason, and you feel nothing but warmth and comfort. So I just, I really like his hair. And taking the top spot, of course, it's Momikashite Fuyu, the Momikashite Fuyu hair. Seeing him with a clean, prim and proper style as Shusaku, making it look very appealing. And he also had this one episode where he went to his real family and he had the fluffiest hair, which is really, really nice also. So I I really miss his Momikashite Fuyu hair. Now let's move on to the exciting part, which is the ranking of boyfriend potential. So I'll do my best not to fangirl too much, but like, you know, I couldn't resist. The last spot, we have the killer inside me, which is AG. Well, there's nothing wrong with AG, but like dealing with the chaos, drama and legal implications associated with him is not what I seek in a relationship. So, Cain and Abel character, which is you, you shows potential. He's cute, but his descent into insanity lowers his ranking on this list. And his feelings for Azusa were sincere, but if you watched Till the end, spoiler alert, um, he chose Hikari, which felt more like a choice of convenience given that he has no other options for romance in this drama. 
Then we have Momika Shite Fuyu, which is Shusaku. Um, he is very adorable. He's like such a puppy, but he can be clumsy. So then I guess we have Ryuichi next. Just because I feel like overall he would be a nice, responsible guy who could be a good boyfriend. <laughs> um, well, of course, yeah, it had to be Togo. Like I said, this is the Yamada Ryosuke character that made me see the light. His very cold and I'm a jerk exterior can be daunting, but the fact that he is a total soft boy when it comes to love is enough for me. Taking the top spot, it had to be Kosuke. We are shown that he was raised right, he's nice to everyone, and he works hard. When Kosuke fell in love, it felt so sincere. And how he took care of Izumi, how he values her, made my heart feel a million different good things all at once. While watching, I couldn't help but notice some intriguing similarities across the dramas. From complex family dynamics, particularly involving the father figures in each of Yamada Ryosuke's characters, to the ever-present theme of sibling rivalry and the sense of not measuring up. The family secrets are also plenty, with birth secrets being a recurrent element. Additionally, adoption and betrayal play significant roles as well. And then there is also the aspect in most characters, which is their fondness for internal monologue, which I find fascinating to hear them think out loud in the most campy way. Some of the characters also keeps on making brain maps, which is like a common theme. There's also expressive and campy facial gestures. Then the theme of unrequited love, endearing sidekick characters, unique and extraordinary love interests, intense and captivating stares. Yamada Ryosuke's performances showcased his remarkable versatility as an actor, moving seamlessly across genres like romance, mystery, and comedy is a testament to his work ethic and I'd like to believe a vast extent of his capabilities. I do appreciate that he doesn't limit himself to one style which all the more made my viewing experience an interesting one. I can't wait to see what he'll conquer next. Have you watched any of these dramas? Out of all the characters Yamada Ryosuke has portrayed, who is your absolute favorite? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching!